blown away with with an indie project budget how um how amazing the shots were and the scenery it was just incredible so i'd love to know about your process of uh working with the director with eddie aria and how that all came about uh well we had initial discussions about what type of look he wanted and from there, we went and we did some camera tests at Panavision and looked at lenses. And some of my inspiration uh, comes from, I love Nordic Noir. So I'm very um, inspired by that. And I very much like the works of Gunnar Fischer and Sven Eichrist and that. So that Nordic look is very, I think, important. Um, that comes across in, in Risen. Yeah, I loved, I love the setting. It just creates this really desolate, and environment, it just, it feels really otherworldly. The setting becomes a part, a bit like Nordic Noir, the, the, the landscape becomes a character in the film. It does, it does. It really adds to the tension and the slow burning feeling um, throughout the film. So it's just amazing. And I wanted to ask the, the other actors um, if the setting really helped you get into character? I mean, I've never experienced anything in my life, uh, you know, minus, it was minus 36 Celsius when I landed at the airport and there were sun dogs in the sky. And I've heard of sun dogs and I, and I thought, that's a sun dog. And I thought, I can't be a sun dog. And I was, you know, Googling around my phone and sure enough, in terms of performance, uh, it forced me because I just had a shirt on. <laughs> so I was in the I was in the winterized RV, and I had uh, hot water bottles <laughs> running backwards and forwards. What it did was probably force me to be more focused than I've ever been in my life. Uh, what was the casting process like for the film? I just got this vague phone call from Eddie. Can you have a cup of coffee with me? And uh, rolled along and had a. A, a coffee and some pastries with him and then it progressed on to wow yeah this sounds good um and um the next thing i knew i was sitting in another coffee shop with nicole doing a chemistry test to see if we actually related as father and daughter and um, nicole and i just bounced off each other beautifully so it was instinctive from eddie's part in terms of my cast i think eddie and i connected over it might have been star now i think which is so unlikely because people say, oh, Star Now, you know, it's just micro projects. But then here we are making a feature film, you know, with Eddie's vision and Eddie's incredible. I mean, I've never seen such phenomenal hard work from a crew. You know, Susan, Eddie, Susan's, you know, focus puller, Anthony, just, you know, people risking frostbite out there on that first shoot when we had our initial discussions he he already had a, a feel for the soundscape of the whole thing so um particularly it, uh, as you as you know the canadian uh, the 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 desolation of the canadian environment in winter um is a character in itself as susan said eddie was talking to me early on at that that coffee shop meeting for instance about how he saw the soundscape and how important he felt the whole soundscape for the movie was so he, he definitely had that vision and i i got the impression that he knew the composer before this and had already been talking to them so he recognized the soundscape as as a character as well as the, the visuals dominic are your eyes have they healed after wearing those contacts <laughs> uh, look, that was—I've uh, never had to wear contacts before as an actor. That was—it uh, was really quite challenging. But I've heard of actors, you know, you know fainting and doing all sorts of crazy things with contacts. So luckily, it was all—it was all, it was all um, you know, grist for the mill, and it all worked out well. What are your next projects? I've got a couple of shorts coming up, but um, not not nothing like definite date-wise because we're still in lockdown here. So um, it's a bit up in the air. A really interesting project called Spiritual Paranoia, which mm -hmm. was started before COVID and it was, was about a pandemic. Um, <laughs> so that's in post-production at the moment. Uh, another one, which is a, a very interesting experimental film called Kleptowomania, which the whole narration is from the lead character, including 
doing all of the other people's voices on how she interpreted their voices and how she saw the perspective. That's in post-production. And I've got another one. What's the other one? Ah, Story of Nadia, which is just on a stall at the minute waiting. It's about half shot because of the lockdown. So, um, yeah, two features in post and one on hold. Uh, in terms of projects coming up, I've just shot a feature in Canberra uh, with an independent filmmaking group there, which is really interesting. Uh, a drama, very different. Uh, very, very different. Couldn't be any more different from Risen. That's in post-production. Uh, I was working with SBS a couple of days ago, which is the, the uh, multicultural broadcasting service here in, in Sydney. Uh, I had to have three COVID tests before I even got on set. So that's very interesting. Uh, we are really are in, someone contacted me the other day and said, I've written a script for you. I went, oh, that's, that's flattering. So that's nice. That's in, that's in um, pre-production and Lily's possibly going to be on that. So uh, isn't it?